Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So this video is part two of my string video and in part one, which will be linked underneath this video, I was talking to you about violin strings and specifically kind of the ins and outs of violin strings, tension, gauges, gut, steel, all that kind of thing that you need to know about strings in order to make your decision on what strings to buy your violin. And this is where this video, part two, comes in. Now, part two, I'm gonna be talking specifically about strings. These are just new strings that I need to put on my violin, but I'm gonna be talking to you about particular brands, models, makes of strings, and what they do and don't, will and won't potentially bring out in your violin. So, this video is about the specific brands, but part one of the video, which you really, really, really should watch before watching this one, will tell you all about tension and gauges, and knowing about tension, gauges, steel, gut, um, synthetic strings will help you make a decision for when you mix and match and put them together with your violins, what do tensions do, what happens if you have a light, low, low tension, what kind of sound are you gonna get out of that? So it's not just really about choosing a particular string based on what I'm gonna be telling you in this video today, but it's knowing why you're choosing those strings. And if you choose a G string like this, for example, which is in an extra high tension, do you have any idea what that's gonna do? Why did I choose an extra high tension? So this is where part one of that video comes in. So I would very, very strongly urge you to go and watch that video first, even if you're a guitar player, because it's very slightly different for the violin, because it's gonna have a different impact, because the guitar is a different instrument to the violin. So go and watch that video first, arm yourself with all the information, then I will tell you about the specific brands and the strings. You can put that together with the two videos and make a decision based on that. First of all, before I do go any further, um, I will be reading kind of off a PDF sheet that I've spent two days putting together along with the other one. As a result of that, I will put this in a PDF and link it underneath this video so you can download it and you can have the information so you haven't got to keep um, you know, watching through this, this video again and again. And the other thing is, is that, quick disclaimer here, this video is intended for you to make a decision based on your violin and what it sounds like. So. Please don't ask me in the comments underneath what string you should buy for this violin or that violin because I just, I simply just don't know. Unless I know what violin it is you've got or unless I'm playing your violin, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have any idea of what string. So if you say to me, oh, hi Alison, I've got such and such violins, what strings would you recommend? I don't know, I don't know. This is why you watch part one of this video. This is why you watch this video. You put that information together. You assess what your violin does or doesn't do, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, what you wanna bring out your violin, what you wanna suppress in your violin. You put all the information collectively together and you can make a decision on what strings you want to eventually buy. Okay, let's get on with it. So first thing is uh, these strings aren't in any particular order. They're just whatever order I've, I felt like putting them in. So. Dominant strings, these are a great choice for students or anyone wanting a quality string at a reasonable price. Dominant strings are probably the most popular strings in the world. They're a, def a default choice for many violinists, including various combinations with other strings. These strings cater for violinists who feel uncomfortable with steel strings, so I'll talk more about that later. They come in three gauges, stiff, medium and soft. Pick according to your instrument or mix and match. Now, if you don't know what any of that means, then I would, again, suggest that you watch part one so that you know what the gauges mean and what each one is doing and uh, playability-wise. Um, you will need to play these in for a few days to get rid of any metallic edge that they often have fresh out the packet. That soon changes, and they do have to be changed at regular intervals to keep the sound. So if you've got a set of dominance that you've had on for a year, get rid of them, get a new set, because they're no longer fresh, you've worn everything off of them, and I guarantee they will be dead. I'm not so keen on dominance. I used to be, I'm not so much anymore. There are better strings that I think you can use instead of dominance, but they are known as like the kind of default set of strings. So you've just got yourself a cheap student violin, um, you've got no idea what, what sound it gives compared to how you're playing. Each person will play a violin ever so slightly differently and get a different sound out of it anyway. So you wanna be playing your violin for a few months first before you make a decision on what strings to buy. 
but if you just want to get rid of the crappy factory strings dominance can be a good idea although I said there are some other ones that I think are a better choice which we'll be coming to later okay next up we've got Eva Parazzi's these are synthetic strings and in part one I talked to you all about synthetic strings these have an unbelievably powerful sound range and modulation, a full round sound and stability coupled with easy response and playability. These are available in thick, medium and thin and you can get a great sound out of these without a lot of effort. They're, they are known for being a very warm, having a warm and brilliant sound, but they must be changed quite often. Some players, including me, do find these strings overrated and the higher tension might be too high for some instruments. Again, high tension, go and watch part one of the video, you'll know what I'm talking about. So the high, ten so the high tension might be too high for some instruments, again demonstrating that the match between instrument and string is a, is, is a challenge and it does need to be, it is quite tr trial and error. I think these strings are overrated on my instrument. I know a lot of people like them and I can appreciate the string for what they are, but on my instrument, they're absolutely awful and they don't last very long as well as I was talking in part one of this video. You might like them and that's great and that's not to say I wouldn't recommend them. For me, I don't like them. I've tried them three times, like various kind of two, three years apart thinking, oh, I haven't tried an Eva Parazzi for three years. Maybe maybe I've changed, maybe my, my years have changed, but no, I still don't like them and I still go back to the same combination that I have which I'll talk about at the end. Okay, moving on, we've got Larsen Zagan. I'm not sure if that's how you, how you pronounce it, apologize if not. These are new synthetic core strings and have received very favorable reviews from violinists. I haven't had the pleasure of trying these. They seem to have rich undertones and a nice timbre range for synthetic strings. Good projection, less tension than other strings, but they are quite responsive. Again, I don't have any personal preference on those, uh, personal experience, I should say, with those. If you have tried these, please let me know in the comments underneath. I'd be interested to hear what you thought of them. For Astro Passionis, I have one here, which is one of these. These gut strings are still new, but they've received favorable comments from some musicians, definitely including me. Parastro claims that these modern gut strings have complex overtones, characteristic of gut strings like Eudoxa and Olive. Better stability and a short break in time than typical gut strings, which I would agree. This one I use just on my G string only, and this is an extra high tension because I don't wanna work so hard when I'm in the higher registers of the G string. So yeah, I thoroughly recommend these. Moving on to Prastro Eudoxas, they're gut strings with a wonderfully rich, warm and quite a full sound. The response tends to be a little slower with them and they can sound dull on some new instruments. These strings are said to be best on old or antique German and Italian violins, but such a statement shouldn't prevent you from experiencing the richness of gut. If you do want some gut strings, olives are quite good to, to buy. I'll talk about olives next actually, but Eudoxas are probably not gonna be suitable for every instrument. I think Eudoxas on mine would probably choke my violin and probably sound, make my violin sound too stuffy. I've got my, my violin's German Mittenwald, German violin, about 200, 250 years old. So I can imagine the Eudoxas on mine, I wouldn't wanna try them because I'd feel it would, it would make probably the sound too muted, too too muffled. Even though it'd be nice, warm, a rich sound, I don't think it would be bright enough. Especially I play a lot of solo work as well, so definitely not great for doing that. And I don't play a lot of old Baroque music, so Eudoxas for me, the Eudoxas are just not for me and my instrument. This brings us on to Parastro Olives. These are gut strings as well. They are excellent gut strings. I can attest for that. They have more brilliance and a quicker response than Eudoxas, but they do have a high price tag. They are worth it though. They can be an absolute joy to play when married to a matching instrument. On my instrument, they are stunning, possibly even better than the combination that I, I currently use all, all pretty much all year round. The downside to these is that they need tuning a lot more often, but if you can deal with that, then they're definitely gonna be worth it. I tend to not have Parastro Olives during the summer months just because I can't stand the tuning. I'm at gigs, I'm playing away, I'm constantly having to tune them. So I, if I do have them, I stay away from them for the summer months. 
we're coming into the summer now, so no. But when the new set of strings I'm about to put on um, are dying come the winter time, then I'll change, probably change to olives because they are very, very nice. Okay, this moves us on to Tomastic Vision. The Vision line of strings by Tomastic have a short breaking period, ease of playing and high stability. They have a focused, clear, open and brilliant tone, although some players report them to be a little bright and one dimensional on their violins. These might be great for cheaper student violins. Um, they come in solo, which is titanium, orchestral and regular depending on what type of sound that you would want to produce. There is a little bit about the titanium, the orchestra and the regular, but if you download the PDF sheet, you can read a little bit more there. For Astro Obligatos, which are these, I use these for my D and my A string. They're synthetic core strings, and they seem to come the closest to sounding like gut core strings, which I, I definitely do, do, do agree with. However, they're more responsive and more brilliant than gut strings. Absolutely. The obligato gold E string has a very nice is a very nice string, being less tonally aggressive than the Doxa olive E string. Good for overly bright instruments. So I use these on my D and the A. I don't use them as a full set. I don't see why I wouldn't, but I just prefer having a passione for the G and on my E string I have a gold label. That's just my personal preference for what I want to use my instrument for. Now we're moving on to Daddario, so Kaplan Golden Spiral. These gut core strings, they produce a very rich and warm sound. They're said to be excellent for solo and ensemble playing. That might be good for a lot of you out there. They can be hard to play in and sluggish, although the solo line is less so. I don't really have any experience with the, the Kaplan's steel strings aren't really something I would put on my antique violin, um, but I can imagine they would be quite popular with a lot of you out there. Now, Parastro Tonicas, one of Parastro's answers to the dominance, with the other answer being the Aracor, Parastro Aracor strings. Now, these Parastros share a lot of the virtues of dominance, although they tend to have a little more complex complexity and usually do not suffer from the metallic edge when first put on an instrument. They are, they're very clean, bright and clear without being overly bright. I just think Dominance can be a bit sort of, you know, a bit meh. Dominance are a very good quality string, don't get me wrong, they're great to replace the factory string with, but the tonicas I feel are better because they're just brighter, cleaner, and clearer. Now you've got the Daddario Zyx. Um, Daddario Zyx have a bright, focused quality, it must be played for a few days before they reach their best sound. Some players find that graduations in the piano range are more difficult to obtain with these strings. So I've only had experience with the one of the G strings on the Zyx and I quite liked it. One of my students has tried a set, set of Zyx and they're stunning on hers. And she's got an antique violin, so I think steel strings, Daddario strings are dependent on your, your violin really. You've got Daddario Pro Arts. Now these are dark and smooth. I do have a spare set of these in my case should anything happen to my current strings. I never go anywhere without a set of strings. I haven't actually had the privilege of putting them on yet to try them. They used best on bright and rough sounding violins probably not the best on older antique violins such as mine, having said that. But I just, you know, I, I, I just had them sent to me many, many years ago. I've just kept them just as a standby for when a string breaks in the middle of a gig. Should that happen, hopefully not. And then I can replace it with the, the strings that I would, I would normally put on my violin. So I would say that those then are gonna be very, very good for cheaper student quality violins. Daddario Helicores. Now these are steel core strings that are warm sounding and like all steel strings, they are very responsive. They sport more interesting overtones than many metal strings due to their unique windings. I would only ever use these on electric violins as I think these are best on those. That's not to say that you can't put them on a violin, an acoustic violin. I personally feel that because of what they are, I feel that they are suited best to electric violins, in my opinion, and that's all I would ever recommend to put on an electric violin. You can put whatever string you want on an electric violin, but I don't see the point in doing it because it's an electric violin and it's being amplified through an amp or a PA speaker. So to get the best 
kind of tone out of your electric violin, I always feel Heather Cores are the one to go with and they're very long lasting as well. Now you've got Larsen, Larsen regular. Larsen strings are powerful and brilliant, but the D and the G strings tend to lose their sound quality quickly and suddenly. They have a similar chord to dominance, so they have less tension. They can be described as even more colorful and more powerful than dominance. I don't have any experience with these Larsen strings. If you do, please comment underneath and let me know. That would be interesting. Then we've got a few others that I haven't tried. Um, just for no other reason than I am a bit of a Parastro girl and I've spent a lot of time and money trying out different types of strings. Parastros do suit my violin the best and I think once you've found what you like, you tend to stick to it and there may be a better combination out there for me but I do really like the combination that I keep going back to time and time again. So you've got Corelli Alliance Vivace, these strings are based on a composite core. While focus, they also provide rich overtones. They tend to be more powerful in terms of projection than obbligatos, but they're not quite as sweet. They lack the harshness that even the Eva Parazzi's can bring to some instruments. Like the dominance, they work very well on many instruments and they last quite a long time as well. So again, if any of you have any experience with these Corelli Vivaches, please let me know in the comments underneath. Then you've got super sensitive red label. These are steel strings, they tend to be preferred by fiddler players. They're often found on school instruments because one of the three virtues that they have, practically indestructible, I agree with that. Um, the other virtue is that they're very inexpensive and the third being that they are appropriate for fiddle playing. Again, I'm, I'm not a fiddle player, I'm a classical player. If you are a fiddle player, try them let me know see you know see see what you think of them but if you do do more fiddle playing then you might find that these super sensitive red labels might suit your style of playing and your instrument a little bit more so there we go that's just probably the most um the most popular kind of strings there are there are many strings out there I, you know this, this video could go on and on and on and on forever about all different types of string just because i haven't mentioned a string in this video doesn't mean to say that i don't recommend it or i don't endorse it or i don't like it or anything like that um it's just you know i had to choose the main ones so i did just a few final thoughts on these these strings. So for me, I love Parastro tonicas on all student violins because they give it a clean, clear, bright sound without sounding too shrill. The bow doesn't have to work so hard on them either. So straight out of the box, cheap violin, place it Parastro tonicas, you're good to go. If you want a darker, richer or deeper tone in general, I get asked this a lot, I would probably go for gut strings like, like Prestro's Eudoxas. Getting a warm, rich and deep tone on a violin is very, very difficult if your violin is not already warm, rich and deep. So you can get warm gut strings or gut strings that are, that are warm, but that still might not be your answer to everything. If money is no object to you, you could try Prestro Olives. Other than that, you can maybe try a viola if it's not dark or rich enough for you, you know, maybe try the viola. And for my personal string choice, because I know you're probably all gonna wanna ask, my number one string choice is this. So I have a Parastro gold label on my E in medium tension. I have an obbligato aluminium on my A in medium tension. I have another obbligato um, in medium tension and steel. Uh, sorry, silver, just because of uh, sometimes like my fingers sweat when I'm playing at gigs and things like that because you're getting hot. So that's just to help them last a little bit longer just near the neck. So a D string medium tension in uh, silver. And then for the G string, I'll have a Passione in extra high tension because I like to work quite high up on the G string in third position and above, and I don't want to work so hard. So I have an extra high tension you could, this is sterling silver actually, but you could just buy a medium tension. There we go, so remember that I can't recommend which strings you shouldn't, shouldn't buy based on your violin. That's something that only you are gonna know and you will be able to find out. But hopefully part one of this video and this video put together will help you make those decisions. And remember the PDFs will be linked underneath the video so that you can just download the PDF for free and just, you know, 
have that printed out at your disposal at any time. So I really do hope this video has been useful to you and full of information. If you've liked the video, thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.